All right, I'm I'm making this to do a little bit of demonstration about uh something uh some package called uh, in R called Shiny, uh which is built for full page design and and reflective uh, reflective uh, page application. So uh, I I've, I've done a little bit of uh um uh, reflect page or or, or just a uh, reflect page or building with this um. And there's, uh, I'm gonna explain this uh, by using by using one of the uh, source code of the of my project, uh, which is which is this, which I'm I'm not gonna explain to you now. But uh, if you're interested in this project itself, uh, just go to uh, this website and uh, <coughs> and you could use it. And then you, so, why do we need a full page? Because we we want a, a better representation and uh, a better representation of the data in some reflective or some interactions between the people who are exploring the data and the uh, and and the model behind it. Because uh, this is uh, what it is used for. And if you want to get some official things about shiny. Uh, that's just a, a shiny tutorial made by our studio, or you could access to the help and you type in shiny whatever, and you get the official document. But I'm just uh, explaining in, in some practical practical way. Uh, I'm just showing how this works. So you, yeah, the slide three um, coordinates of the triangles, or you have two. Uh, you have two coordinates of uh, two uh, points of uh, location of the points of the triangle, and you plot a feasible range for another for another one. Uh, and as you change it, as you change the input, it's gonna reflect with the change uh, in the in the input. That's why it's called reflective page. And you can't just define the console something equals to something because uh, at each time. Uh, when the user is accessing it with the with the user interface, it's like exactly it the server who uh that receives the uh input from from the user interface and, and process it and take it back to the user as a plot or um that is um or it renders the table or you're gonna select something that lets you save the data and uh, yeah. It's, it's just how it works, but but there's a whole lot of things you can you could do with it. Um, for example, uh, this act, actually yeah, I just thought of a very basic thing. So whenever you start a new project, uh, if you I'm assuming you are using our studio, which uh, I believe most people are. Okay, but it's, but it's fine. It's, it's, uh, as long as you get the format right, it's not gonna matter. So you're gonna uh, right. Uh, you'll create a new package and you can name it oh, right. so I'm just gonna use use the desktop right mm, create project and automatically yeah means you're gonna oh sorry I used the wrong thing I actually should use uh Shiny web application. Oh, I have to find this mm. new project. You should uh, always use this, but it, it, I know it looks similar, but it's actually Shiny web application. Uh, So automatically, it's gonna create two files for you, which is one of them is user interface, which is UI in short, another one is server. So um, if you run this, it's gonna give you an example application for it, which is quite simple. And but it consists of some very basic thing you're gonna need. Uh, what's the basic thing you're gonna need? The template. Um, actually, one of the one of the reason I, I recommend you to use this function instead of typing this, setting up a folder yourself, is that you it's it's, it's quite crucial to get the uh, get the format right. So, where's it? Um, 
demonstration too. So you get in in that with a project file or two R files. Hmm. So in the session, uh, in this code and uh, actually, I'm just uh, do a little bit of, uh, some demonstration. If you miss something in the template, sometimes it could be really serious. Why is it? Because yeah, for example, you miss a colon here. It's not giving you any warnings. It's not giving you any warnings, and and you hilariously run the application and, and save the selected file. It's not gonna work, and you went to debug. And it's telling you this uh, error. There's an error sourcing it. But actually, if you look at this, um, well, it's, it's been better. Uh, so when I developed the last application, it didn't even tell you where the, um, the 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 problem is. All right. So I'm gonna fix this. All right. Uh, pretty good. All right. So something compulsory. You're gonna have a title. Uh, type whatever. And, And uh, you're gonna get a slide bar layout, which is the uh, which is the thing on the left. This is a sidebar, and this is the main panel. The main panel is where you're gonna uh, uh, represent some plots, render some tables or, or tables or list, and display to the uh, user. And this is where you define an input. The input doesn't always have to be in this. Uh, slide uh, this uh, slider. It could be some type text input button uh, selection, whatever. Um, and for each for each input, uh, you must have an input name, which is which is usually the first uh, the first thing in this input function. So you're gonna have slider input, uh, selection input, or text input. A lot of inputs, and uh, uh, another one is usually the uh, the text it has on. So number of bins you gonna get number of bins and minimum maximum value. Something uh, something important here is that usually it it only allows you to select some uh, uh, integers. So you, if you want a three point five, you can't get it, and no matter how the grid is so. Uh, what what I'm doing something sometimes in design to use the small use the smaller unit like millimeters to present things, or if you want things to get accurate, you should really use text input to type in some uh, numbers instead of sliding it because it's always uh, pretty small. And the server takes every input into the uh, function so for every input you got a yeah so. Uh, one of the one part of it which is which is compulsory, and the output and and you see the this thing here, input dollar sign bins. So uh, these are all lowercase, lowercase. So the name of input is after a dollar sign, which is after input, the same as output. So you got a dist plot here. You got some same thing here. So it's actually taking something from here and do some processing, processing, sorry, processing work or, or, or graphing work and, and, and represent it to this. So it's right, so it's right here. But, um, the way of doing this could vary. It might be a plot, might be a table. And, uh, usually the, something input calls something, it's just, it's just something input, but the I there is uppercase. You got the text input. Mm. Go select input. Oh, oh select input actually. <laughs> yep, you're gonna have to. This could be something really useful. So, and something output is similar. All right, that's the basic of using it. And uh, if you want to see more about this. Uh, see me explain that this uh, the the project just go to the next video yeah